Hello and welcome to our video on customizing the dashboard. So in the last video we talked about customizing the help desk grid views and in case you're not aware you can also customize the grid views in the other modules as well. I think we mentioned that in the last video as well but uh, you can customize the views in the change management module or in the asset management module etc. And that's important because all of those different grid views that you customize to view the records that you want to view in each of those modules, those views are actually used by the dashboard to create these charts. So you'll notice on my dashboard here today, I have a few charts already. And if I hover just to the top right of one of the charts, you'll notice a little kind of toolbar area here appears. And there's a few different options here. So the preview button here, all it does is maximize it to show this chart on the whole screen. The second option here does an export, so you can export this image out as a PNG file so you could put it on a PowerPoint presentation or put it on a website or something like that. The refresh button obviously refreshes the data behind that view. The X here will actually close this view and remove it from your dashboard. But probably the most important one you want to know about here is this little cog, this little gear, which is the actual settings for this particular view. So if we click on this little gear, you'll notice there's a few options here. So it asks you which view you want to use. And this view in this drop down here comes right from those grid views that you've built in your help desk or in your asset management module, etc. So you'll notice that there are some custom views here that I've created, as well as some of the canned views that come with the system. But you'll notice there's views in here for assets. There's views in here for tickets. There's views in here for change requests. So you'll notice that the views that you create in those other modules will show up in this drop down here under chart view. I have all tickets selected. That's going to show all tickets, whether they're open or closed. Then you can give the graph a title. So this one I have as all tickets by category, but you could change that and say all tickets by requester. And then you select your chart field. And that is the field that you want to group the data on. And so I've, since I've called the chart all tickets by requester, I'm going to go down here and look for requester, select that person. And I'm going to leave it on pi because I like that view. You'll notice there's also line and bar. So it just depends on the type of data you're trying to view here. If, if you want to do uh, tickets by day or something like that, then a line might work better because it might break it up by day. But uh, in this particular case, I want to see you know, which user is putting in the most tickets, for example. So I'm going to leave it on Pi. And then you can set the auto refresh to be anything from one minute up to 30 minutes, or you can turn the auto refresh off. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to hit Apply. And you'll notice my chart has now changed, and now you see the names of my requesters in here. And you probably know this already, but you can double click on a section of the chart and it'll bring up a list of all the tickets that actually belong to that section of the chart. And if you expand these out, you can actually see the data that's in each one of those tickets. And from here, you can actually double click on the ticket and go straight into that. And that goes for whether it's an asset or a change request or anything. So another thing here, you'll notice that if I hover just near the top of the chart, you'll notice I can quickly toggle between the pie line and bar there. So if I want to see the different types of charts without going into the settings, I can go ahead and do that. So I can also, you'll notice if I come up here near the top, you'll notice that my cursor turns into like this move icon. And if I click now and drag, I can actually take this chart and move it over here. So if I want to rearrange where my charts are located, I can go ahead and do that and reorder them. You'll also notice there's a plus button up here at the top. So if I want to add another chart, I just hit plus, it'll pop a panel into the next open spot. I can come up here and hover and hit the gear icon. I can pick a chart. Let's say I want to do all assets and I'm going to do assets by type. And I'm going to go in here and pick a field. Let's use asset type. I'm going to do pie again. Just like the pie view, I like how that looks for looking at big groups of records and seeing the, uh, you know, the distribution of the types of records. Uh, but if I go ahead and double click on one of these sections, just like you saw before with the tickets, here we are. I'm in the view that actually shows you all the different workstations 
that belong to that section of the chart. And then if I want to get rid of one of these views, it's very easy. I can just come over here, click on the little X. It confirms, are you sure you want to get rid of this panel? I say yes, and now that panel is gone. So I can even do some things with sizing, and some of this you just have to play with a little bit to kind of get the hang of it. But if I, let's say I want to take this chart because it's kind of small. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to kind of drag here a little bit. I'm going to drag to the left. And as I do that, you'll notice that this box now gets smaller. So if I drop it in there, now notice I have half the space taken up by that chart. So now I can fit a lot more charts on the screen because with the pie, the pie fits in one of these smaller areas much nicer than, say, maybe a line or a bar. So maybe in this case, I want to take this one also, and I want to move this one over and have this be in this small chart spot also. So I'm going to drag this one out and get it to take up the entire width. And then if I wanted to, I could add another section here. So you'll notice there's several different ways you can lay this out. Some of this you just have to kind of play around with until you get them exactly where you want them. And you see, so what I've done here now by grouping the charts like this is I've actually created like another column almost. And you'll notice if I move my mouse over here, I can grab this and kind of resize this column. So now I can put all these small charts that I want here on this right hand side and any of my larger charts I can put over here on my left hand side and if I want to stretch these out a little bigger I can do that and so so there's several different ways you can lay these panels out and you just kind of have to grab them and drag them around and play with them until you kind of get the hang of of how they move and how they fit and these are specific to each technician so each technician can customize how their screen looks for the way they like to work and the data they like to see and so that is a a brief overview and how to use the new dashboards and track it. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner inside track it. Some other useful resources are the track it community where you can talk with other track it users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.